Hello and welcome back and thank you for coming through that door on the studio today to paint away the stressor of everyday life. Yes, stress is a big thing. Vincent van Gogh suffered with stress and anxiety and depression all of his life. So what I thought I would do is actually paint a Vincent van Gogh type of paint. Well, it is a Vincent van Gogh painting. It's one of the last paintings he actually did. But without further ado, let's have a look at what we're going to be painting today and have a look at the colour palette. So basically we got French ultramarine blue, we got some Prussian blue, we got some vermilion, we got some emerald green and we got some titanium white with just a touch of ultramarine blue in it because um, Van Gogh used a lead white. He's also used, as you can see, um, some other colours which I've got here, which I've mixed by hand. And these are going to be available on the website for you if you want to pop along and try these colours out. I've mixed all of um, Vincent Van Gogh's palette up and tubed it, ready for sale if you want to try it. So he used um, a, a zinc yellow. This is a, a zinc yellow. And as I said, I've mixed all these by hand. These are mixes. They're not true colours. When I say true colours, they're not... This is not zinc yellow. It's a, it's a mix to get you to that colour. So, um, and again, chrome yellow was another one of his favourite colours. And, and for all the other Impressionists as well. So this is a chrome yellow mix. As I said, it's, it's as close as I can possibly get it to a chrome yellow. So it's, a, it's like an like orangey yellow then. And we've got some Naples yellow, which is just basically Naples yellow. There you go. It's a little bit thinner, that one. And he used a lot of um, lake pigments as well. These are dyes that were added to pigments and, and um, um, like gessos and stuff like that to actually make for the, to the, the dye to attach itself basically to the chalk then. Um, and this is uh, um, a coconut lake. So I know he used a lot of these lake pigments. In fact, he used three, I think. And the other one was a, like a lake madder. So this is as close as that as I can get it. Um, and um, as I said, all these are up for a sale on the website if you want to pop along and try them out. So without further ado, I'm working on a 20 by um, a 20 by 16 inch canvas. Um, this is not the size he used. He used, a, he used a different size. I will explain all that as I go along, but. What I'm going to do now is start the painting and um, I will talk a little bit about Vincent and I will put the picture up that I'm going to be using as well. I've got that down on my iPad, as you can see. So that's my reference point. And we're going to go for this. Let's have a go. Let's see if we can't recreate this in our own style. That's the thing. So, so I, I would imagine, I would imagine, I don't know. I've done a little bit of research, which I'm going to explain to you in a second. And I do apologize if my seat creaks. I would imagine that he would have prepared, prepared all his canvases um, prior to actually going out because he'd done a lot of plein air painting. And I think that um, he'd done the bulk of his work in the field, literally, and then come back to the studio and finished it. This is what I think has happened. And, and the research um, I've done personally seems to show that fact. Um, it all depends on how big these canvases were that he actually transported. So I would have thought that um, he would have put some sort of ground on you. Now, I put a grey ground on. Um, for simple reason is I blanked off um, another painting that I did. If you want to see what painting was actually behind this canvas, check the iCards, and it's there. Yes. But I'm just going to get a little bit of burnt ember on my brush, and I'm using a I'm using a, a, a one-and-a-half-inch brush, and these are available on the website. And this is what I use these for, um, for big canvases and also for... Um, putting a ground on so I'm just going to put a ground of acrylic on there um, because I'm using my medium mix formula again which is available on the website um, it's not going to underbind so I can thin it down a fair bit um, without worrying about the paint flaking off but there's going to be other layers on top of this so um, they should seal this in place it's that's that's my experience so I'm just gonna put a ground on and I wanted to show you this stage because People say to me, um, "Why? What colour? What colour should I use as a ground?" 
Um, but I'm going to be painting a lot of blue and yellow in this. And I thought um, a burnt ember, which is a traditional colour actually, um, for this type of thing, um, would work really well because it would show that um, bit of warmth of the burnt ember that we've got um, coming through certain points of the painting now on the bottom of the painting we've got some darker colors in fact we got some burnt ember on that down there which i haven't put on my palette um, because burnt ember was another um actually it was van dyke brown i should say i'll put some van dyke brown on the palette it was van dyke brown that um van gogh used not burnt ember so this could have been a, a van dyke brown just um ground I forgot what I was gonna say <laughs> my brain goes sometimes it does and it's not it's not hard these days at my age sometimes you start talking about something and you either change the subject completely or you forget entirely what you were gonna say and um, that's what I love about making videos so what we do then we allow that to dry naturally if you want to you can put it next to a radiator um, to force dry it or you could just use what I'm going to use, and that's a hairdryer, to dry it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So the good thing about having an iPad um, next to your desk, your workbench, or some sort of tablet, is the fact that you can actually zoom straight in to the image, and it doesn't cost anything to print it out. So um, looking at my particular iPad, this is an old iPad, it's first generation iPad, I've had this for years. And I took this into an iPhone shop once and and had it rebooted and she said, wow, she said, that's an old one. <laughs> I said, I've added a bit, yes. So you can zoom straight in, look, and you can actually see ne nearly all the brush strokes. And you can play around and you can pick on different sections and you can work it out. You can see exactly how he did his crows, look. They're just little upside down V's and... Uh, proper um, way up these <laughs> and you can see some of his brush strokes as well so we're going to try and replicate this as close as we possibly can so ipad a very good tool to have in the studio if you've got one or any tablet in fact or you could just use a mobile phone like this and just put that on your bench very handy very very handy and i'm telling you now if van gogh had an iphone or an ipad he would definitely have used that so let's get back on. This is actually dried off lovely now. I hit it with the air dryer and um, I'm just let it stand there for a couple of minutes as I was talking about my iPhone. So let's get back to the painting. So I've picked up a long handled short flat and I think that's like a, a number a number 10 or something like that. Let's have a look. It's a 15 actually. Uh, yeah it's a 15. There we go. So um, but you know you use any any brush you want really. Um, I would have thought he would have used brushes like this, very similar. i got to get some grease on this seat. I really have. Okay, so let's have a look at the sky, shall we? Now, do I go in Do I go in dark and then go to light? Or do I go in the light and add dark? Decisions, decisions. And this is what we've got to do. So I'm going to go in dark. So I'm going to get some Prussian blue. And you can see my paint is very thick. And um, I've mixed all this by hand, this paint. This is a French ultramarine blue. Uh, there and this is a Prussian blue but you I had it mixed up then this is a Prussian blue so you don't have to do that you can use any any um, paint that's on on the market but you do need a, a thicky thick type of paint now I, I do actually sell paint thickener on the on the website www.clive5art.co.uk so go in there and have a look for some of that that's important and basically just be erratic like this because this is one of his last paintings he'd done before he shot himself um, in the chest I believe and um, he's a very very um, troubled man and a brilliant brilliant man you know obviously a brilliant artist and and as I talk um, as I paint this sky I'm gonna I'm gonna come down to roughly I think there around about that level there I would imagine and I can imagine him. I can imagine him in the field, can you? You can imagine him carrying his easel and going through the fields and walking. And and he's got oil paints. We we are using acrylics, and he's got oil paints. So this is what makes me think that if he was working on a big canvas, it would be difficult for him to transport his easel and his paints and his 
pink box and his seat and you know with him that's that would have been difficult so I, I'm wondering whether he just put the base colors in like this and we will do that down the bottom I'll tell I'll show you exactly what I mean when I say the base colors and I'm gonna go into some French ultramarine blue because I wouldn't imagine it would clean his brush much because he'd he just wants to get that color and this type of impressionism is is a wonderful um, expression of yourself and I, I can imagine that he's being troubled you know he, he sees the turmoil in the sky and he feels the color in the in the paint and you know he, he's, he's he's mixing all this together um like this and he's just being he's just putting it in the sky and you can see the, the exaggerated brush strokes he's not bothered really he just wants to get some he wants to get his expression on the paper on the canvas i should say so he's not he's not worried about blending he's not worried about anything really he's just he wants, wants to get his feelings into this painting and and that's what makes artists like that a genius because he was just he's just painting for himself he was um never sold a lot of paintings you know so you know he wasn't he wasn't recognized until after his death in fact so you know he was a very frustrated very frustrated artist like like all of us so he's just getting just getting the sky in and just allow it to build it doesn't have to be exactly like vincent's painting but what you want to do is get a representation of that painting yourself because what you want to do is get yourself in this painting feel don't paint don't copy the painting you need to get it to look similar but what you're aiming to do you is get that get yourself into this painting and, and, and feel and feel that artist you can see the way I'm just picking up a bit of white slapping in a bit of blue and and getting down there into this this color I'm following as close as I can to the the photograph but I'm, I'm not I'm not worried I'm not worried if it's not accurate what I'm more worried about is is it if it if it just sits well and that's what I want I want those I want those brush strokes to sit I'm not sure what that is there there's a there's a, there's a white bit there with a crow in it and I don't know what that is and I'm zooming in on my iPad and I don't know what that is but there we go it doesn't matter you must have seen something there I don't know what that was it's got a bit of yellow to it actually let's look at it it looks like a bit of yellow in there I don't know what that is he's got a bit of a, a bit of a light mark around here now let's get this guy in let's mix some white up I want I want to get this this is a f French ultramarine blue and white the Prussian blue went on first in the in the background there so this is a lovely color this French ultramarine blue And I'm looking at, I'm zooming in as I do this, and um, I'm zooming in as I do this just to see roughly that sky, how flat that sky is there, and um, where there's that part there has got more brush strokes in it. And this is the area that I was talking about just now, see? I don't know what that is. I don't know whether that's a, a cloud, maybe. That's catching a lot of the sun. Maybe that's what it is. It could be the cl a cloud he just decided to put that in and then not worry about the rest of them. So that was maybe just his, well, there is clouds there, so I'll just put that in and that's it. Maybe there was just one cloud in the sky. Who knows? Is that a cloud or is that a sun? In open to interpretation, I think. So definitely open to interpretation there. Um, and that's... Uh, Use the iPhone in that part, just for my own notes. So, 
what we're going to do is get this this is a little bit more this is a little bit looser down here I say looser not so much looser it's it's more it's more brushed in than I can see this is what makes me think whether he put the the final brush strokes in in the studio I don't know I don't know I'll have to do some more research on this and I'm going to be doing some more Van Gogh paintings and I just like this brush strokes there we go Let's, I'm losing I'm getting too close to the ferrule so I want to I want to get up there to get up to the top of the brush there like that because I, I want less control paint is getting a bit sticky touch a just a touch of that medium mix just to get my brush work in I'm not worried about some of the canvas showing on there let's get a little bit of that Prussian blue back in the sky let's get some of that Prussian blue back in I want some dark in there like that I don't want to lose it all and this is what happens with oil paints is these because they they stay they stay wet for months in fact months and months and months and um, there's other stuff you can put in these things to I'm beginning to think whether that is a cloud maybe you know not the Sun I thought it was a Sun that's but that's my interpretation of what that is maybe that's just the Sun who knows so I got all these blues going on in my brush look I got a light blue that side I got Prussian blue that side oh and this is this is what he would have done this is this was just mixing paint on and getting those brush strokes in and I don't know how long this lesson is going to be and I don't particularly mind because I think it's just nice to get do something different and you know painting a, a, a master's painting like this is you know it is what you should do really so get these colors I can imagine his palette because you he, he would have used he would have used a wooden palette like that see this is what Van Gogh would use one of these and he would have had bits of paint here and he would have had bits of paint there like that and and he would have got this ultramarine blue there like this and he would have got some the white and, and he would have been picking up all these colors and his palette would have been like that and they would have still been wet when he went home and this is what again was making me think that you know you've got to transport all this type of paint and um, um that makes me think it just it just just me personally so maybe 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 we got a bit of we got a bit of i think these are clouds you know i think these are clouds maybe maybe we should maybe we should just make that into a cloud then like that and then i'm gonna get them um, paper i'm gonna pull the paint off my brush i'm not washing my brush i'm not gonna wash my brush until i go down into the yellows and the browns and the greens and um and that so I'm, as i'm working in the sky i'm just gonna put the paint on like this how long would you have taken to paint this sky i wonder i don't know would it have been a quick painting would it have been a quick painting and would he would have gone home and had his cup of tea <laughs> i don't know we only we can only guess can't we, we because we don't truly know do we not, not even the experts they don't they don't know whether this, this was actually his final painting or whether it was they know it was one of um his final paintings uh, uh and it was done in France um, because I think he was staying with his sister or his brother or something down there because he's, he's, he, was a, he was in France a lot and um, I quite like the way this is coming on I'm getting a bit more Prussian blue I'm gonna build in like this and there's, there's a lot of a lighter blue there again I'm just gonna pull some paint off my brush get some more white and I'm going to get that. Brush effect in there. Get some more of this. Be careful I don't hit the yellow. It doesn't matter if I got some blue green in the sky anyway. So, you know, I don't think he would have worried about that. Oh, bit of green in the sky. Oh, well, I'm an impressionist. I can do that. <laughs> Nobody's buying my paintings anyway, so I don't really care. I'm, uh, I've had a bad day today and those sheep kept me up all night last night and the cows were mowing in the field and I've just had enough of this already. I 
can't deal with this life anymore. That's that's not me. That's Van Gogh. <laughs> and you can see the, you can see the anger, can you? He said, just can't handle this life anymore. I've just had enough. I kept my ear off, and nobody cares. <laughs> I just want to get this painting done because nobody's buying them why aren't they buying my paintings can you see the anger can you see the anger developing in that painting can you see it i would imagine that's that's what he felt like i really do i really do think that's that's what he felt like you know it's 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 to him it was it was anger he was getting out he was painting away that stress of everyday life and People said he was a genius because of the the impression that he made during his painting, the, the impressionism itself. This was the movement going on with Monet and Manet, and um, they were all friends of Van Van Gogh, Monet, Manet. He knew them all. He knew Toulouse Lautrec, and they were all doing really well. And he wasn't getting anywhere, and he couldn't understand why am I? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong in this painting? Says Van Gogh. Because don't think it's me talking. <laughs> but he's saying to himself, What am I doing wrong? Why can't why can't I sell any of my paintings? I keep borrowing money off my brother. He keeps buying me paint. He, he believes in me. And I don't know why people are not buying my artwork. I seem to lose... I was having a glass of wine with Toulouse and he's doing really well. He's actually sitting there drawing paintings of the dancers and he's selling them on the spot. And I do one and nobody wants one. What's the problem? <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Money. He's bought this lovely house and he's painting his, 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 his um, lilies. <laughs> and everybody's buying his lily paintings. And they're 17 feet by 20 feet. I don't believe it. <laughs> you can see the frustration, can't you? Understand when you when you look in the paintings like that, when you when you're looking at artwork, and and I've done a lot of um, I've done a lot of travelling with with Jason in London, and I've got a fantastic um, museum and gallery, art gallery in Cardiff, the National Welsh, uh, the National Gallery of uh, of Wales, and um, again I'll put a little I put a little link up there. If you want to have a little look around, there wasn't any art in there actually because I was I was I went up there to do the um, do the Leonardo da Vinci um, gallery um, because they they were they were showing some of his work and um, I took my little grandson with me the first week I didn't get to see anything and I took my other grandson with me the second week and he took the camera over and he was walking around doing a little vlog so I'll check it out <laughs> so am I happy with that so far Well, I don't know. I don't know. Let's put some more. In fact, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to add a little bit more to this in a second. I guess that's what he did. Maybe that's, that's what he did. He thought, oh, I've had enough of this now. I've had a, I've had a guts now. I've had enough. You know, I've had enough of this. Oh, I'm not doing any more. I've had enough. That'll do. If they don't want it, they don't have to buy it. And they don't buy it anyway. So, okay. I'm going to go do some yellow now because I want to do some yellow. <coughs> I'm going to paint this cornfield down. So, um, I suppose he picks up a different brush, and but I'm just going to use the same brush. So I'm just going to clean my brush. Maybe just use one brush, I don't know. <laughs> so looking at the colours, he's gone in quite dark. So I would imagine that he went in, he would have went in with the, um, the chrome yellow. This is the chrome yellow, like that. And that, to me, is looking a little bit yellow. So I'm going to add a little bit of vermilion to it because he would have orange that up. He would have grabbed some vermilion or some um, conical lake or something like that. But he would have he would have added he would have added a bit of orange to that. I'm sure he would have he would have gone just gone in and I would I would imagine he would have just gone like this and you know just painted in the painted in the yellow. He's looking at the field and. There's, there's a little bit of yellow there. So he's just going to block it in. 
Now we know about blocking in, don't we? We know about blocking in, so we just block in the colour. And he added some detail on top of this, I would imagine. But he said that's 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 just that'll do. I'm not worried too much about this, he said. You know, he's he's just slapping the paint on them. He's putting it on thick like this. There you go. Don't forget, this would have been a longer canvas, not such a squishy one. Um, I've actually got a big canvas behind me. I'll show you in a second. This it is a Van Gogh painting. Again, that was said to be one of the last that um, he actually did, and I haven't really got round to painting it because I I, I I was going to last year um, paint this painting, um, which I'm going to show you in a second, and I never actually got round to painting it. So there you go. If you want to learn a lot, is paint a painting by a master, and in their try and, in their style, try and adapt, try and try and get in their head. It's a bit dangerous when you're messing around with somebody like Van Gogh because you know you could end up really depressed, and um, you're trying to paint away the stress of everyday life, and you could end up having a worse day at the end of it. <laughs> I don't like this painting. No, there we go. Let's just get that on there like that. This damn sun is shining on it, drying up my paint too much, and I've just had enough of this. But still, I'm out in the quiet. Nobody's going to disturb me in this field. Who's going to come along and disturb me? Nobody. There we go. Says Van Gogh. <laughs> so we got a bit of that orange colour. You can see a bit of that burnt umber or that Van Dyke brown coming through there. We got a weird looking type of path going on here so I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt umber and a bit of um, what have I put there? I put Did I put zinc yellow? I think that's zinc yellow. I'm going to put zinc yellow and some burnt uh, Van Dyke brown sorry. Zinc yellow and Van Dyke brown and I'm just going to chuck a bit of that in there like that. Zinc yellow and Van Dyke brown. It looks a bit greeny to me. That looks quite nice, actually. Yeah, let's chuck a little bit of vermilion in that as well. Let's just get that in there. And just just chuck it in there like this. This is what he would have done, I think. Just slapped it on. I'm not having a care in the world. I'm not really worried. He's just, he's just glad to get out and just cool his head down for a bit, I think. Maybe he's had a really bad day, who knows. So there's a... There's a road coming in. Let's get this road coming in. This must have been a, a path or, 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 or a road that they used to go into between these... these wheat fields. And that comes up, actually, and it comes around like this. That's a funny perspective, isn't it? It still leads your eye, but... You've got that. It comes in around and it goes up. Don't know what that is there. It's quite dark in here. You've got some green going on. Let's get some emerald green. There's emerald green and that going in there as well. Let me just zoom in on my iPad. There's definitely emerald green and stuff going in there. So you must have painted a little bit of light on dark and a bit of dark on light and just mix these colours up basically. So let's just get them on there. Because my, my Van Dyke Brown, I haven't thickened with my thickening agent, which you can get on the website www.clive5art.co.uk if you're interested. Um, and I know a lot of you are because I've sold quite a lot of it. So um, please pop along and, and check that out. So we still we can still lead our eye into that painting. Look, it's still leading our eye in, but it's done in a in a in a in a way that I, I wouldn't have done. But what do I know? I'm not a master artist. So we get some more of this lovely chrome yellow, and we'll get let's put a bit of this cochnal lake in it. A cock cochnal lake, coch. See, this is. I don't know how, how you would actually say that name. Cochineal. 
Cochneil, Cochneil Lake. Now, in Welsh, I would C O C H is Coch. Coch is red. Cochneil, Cochneil, red, red lake. Hmm, <laughs> could be. I don't know, but yeah, it's Coch. Coch. There we are. That's a lovely colour. Look at that. Oof. Cochneil. No, Cochneil. Depends where you live, I suppose. I don't know. I tell you what, that could actually blend quite nicely into this Van Dyke Brown there. There you go. Tell you a little story. Um, some of the research that I've done, I've picked up in over different websites and the Van Gogh Museum and stuff like this and, and I'd love to go and see that actually if, uh, if I had the opportunity to go over there and see that I'd love to go and see that but maybe when you maybe maybe when you so a little bit of warmth a little bit of warmth in this grass area there um, it's quite, r quite thick there. Looks like that road's coming down like that, and then around. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a cup of tea, and I'm going to let that dry, and I'm going to I'm going to sneak out for about t ten minutes, call an hour. I'm going to have a sandwich, and um, I guess that. Old Vincent would do the same thing. He'd have enough at this point and he'd go, I'm just going to have a cigarette now and I'm just going to lie on the grass and look at these damn crows because all they've been doing is crowing all over the damn place. I've had enough. And um, he's just looking at that that painting and he's ooh, so angry. But was he? Who knows? So I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to shoot off and have a cup of tea and a sandwich. And I'm back. <laughs> so I had a nice sandwich and I had a nice cup of tea and I've come back in and it is yeah, it's okay, it's dried. Um so well it's dryish, I don't mind. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I I've got a, a number eight um short flat. Um and all these brushes, there you go, look at these brushes. Loads and loads and loads of broads of brushes. They are gonna be on the website if you wanna pop along and purchase some of these brushes, they're only two pound each each once they're gone they're gone i've got quite a few of them i got a box full of brushes all different sizes but once they're gone they're gone so have a look and see what you see what's left and they don't hang around long trust me they don't hang around long so we're going to be looking at the painting again um there we go we're going to go into the the right hand side of this painting and i'm looking at um it looks like the lemon, not the lemon yellow. What was this? What was this? It was the zinc yellow, wasn't it? It was. So I'm just picking up some zinc yellow. And I'm going to go along and put some of this in. Like this. There you go. Just put it in, plop it in, like that. Mix it up. Just get some in. Put it on quite thick. And you will get this thick texture. Uh, mix in a bit of chrome yellow and um, zinc yellow together because uh, that's what that's what we do. I'm just going to see if I can plonk this in, and as I do that, um, I want to talk a little bit about this painting is um, Vincent van Gogh was um, it was it was around um, 1883 to 1890 Vincent van Gogh I think that was uh, approximately his um, lifespan and um, I think this was painted in um, in uh, uh, um, uh, sur Aussie <laughs> I don't know Avers somewhere in France anyway uh, yeah my my pronunciations are not good and um, I'm just going to put a little bit of moisture to this paint because it's it's not running the way I want it to. It's uh, 1890 approximately, I think, 1890. Um, oil on canvas. The canvas was um, 
50.5 centimeters by 103 centimeters. I don't know what that is in inches. I'm old school, so I like I like inches. So I'm just just plonking this in. There we are. Just trying to get some ridges of paint, ridges of paint. This particular painting is in the um, Vincent van Gogh Museum. Um, out there in Amsterdam, I believe. I want to go and I would love to go and have a look at it. I know, and, and I, I'm not doing this justice by any any way. I'm not, I'm not saying I am. I, 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 I know. I'm just painting it for for, for fun, and I, and I think that if um, if as a beginner, if if you can do that, then enjoy it. It gives you the opportunity just to let your your hair down and just can try and get this paint in. Um, the way you think it should look. I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. Wheatfield with Crows is one of Van Gogh's uh, most famous paintings, in fact. And um, it's often claimed that this is his very last um, uh, last work. So, as I said earlier, before he shot himself in the chest, which is quite sad, really. It is quite sad. I'm going to put a little bit of that. Naples yellow in my brush as well, I think. There we go. See, we got this wonderful texture going on like that. This is be better with oil paints because oil paints are a little bit thicker and they they they're a little bit more sticky. I was hoping to come in a bit a bit quicker after my sandwich because I I wanted the paint to be, the painting surface to be sticky, so it would drag off my brush rather than just pull off my brush if that makes any sense the menacing sky and crows uh, the crows um, and the dead end path you know it's a dead end path there I said to refer to the end of his life approaching really so he must have he must have had some really bad thoughts in his mind when he was doing this painting I guess so I don't know let's get some of this Naples yellow down there. I'm just going to adjust my camera, not my camera, my iPad. I get a little bit of burned ember into that yellow down there because I want to make this a little bit dirtier here because it, it is there. I'm going to work on the path in a second. I just want to put some block out colour. But I'm wondering. I'm wondering whether is is that is that just a myth or is it is 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 it actually um, did he actually paint this and is, was this like did he see these crows and things that we're going to be putting in later on as maybe the end of his life approaching? Maybe he thought quite badly. Um, he had some suicidal thoughts and. As I said earlier, uh, jokingly, that there wasn't, he hadn't sold any paintings and he couldn't understand and he was quite frustrated and and all that. So maybe, maybe. But um, I believe that um, I believe that he made several other works after this one. So was this the last one? I don't know. Was was this during the same period of? Um, of those maybe menacing thoughts that he had um, going through his mind that maybe he's just had enough of life, basically. The other thing I found out as well that um, he wanted to paint uh, his Wheatfield paintings under uh, like a stormy sky to, to in, try to interpret his, his sadness that he was going through in life at this particular moment in time. So. Yes, it's quite sad, isn't it? So you, obviously you're looking at the painting, you know. Um, again, I say I'm say I'm not a master. I'm not. I, I don't pretend to be uh, anywhere near um, the skill <laughs> that was needed to do something like this. But he used powerful color combinations in his painting. Um, 
as you can see the blue sky contrasts with the yellow orange in the wheat field and while the red of the path there's, there's a lot of red in this burnt umber and there's going to be red in there as well because I'm going to be putting some of this vermilion that in there in a minute and um, it's 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 going to be intertwined with some green bands as well so you know that you can have the green in there to, to correspond with the red so it it's quite interesting when you when you look at um paintings like this and, and i really do encourage you if you've got the opportunity to to go to um museums and things like that and these wonderful um places um galleries and stuff that that are worldwide and please just go and give it a try and see what you can learn because you'd be very surprised you'd be very surprised now they didn't use black um in his paintings um because they impressionists uh to under my understanding um didn't really believe in in black but mixing um a van dyke brown and um and Prussian blue together you're going to get a lovely color um, like a very very similar to a black in any case um, so you know even though there wasn't any black in there per se there was there was still you know you could still add a really dark a really dark blue there um, and then like I said if you, if you get some burnt umber and some Prussian blue maybe there we are burnt umber and Prussian blue you're going to get this really dark black like blue there you go look how, look how powerful that is and there's little flecks of this here and there throughout this painting and i see i see there's a, a bit of really dark color down there as well and um I see flecks here and flecks there and there's some dark bits there and, and the crows are black as well aren't they because crows are black so there's no point having um yellow crows really because you wouldn't see them <laughs> So I'm just going to give that brush just a little rinse, rub it through a bit of, bit of soap. Like I said, give these um, give these brushes a try. Um, as I said, I, 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 I managed to get a, a stock of these brushes, so I'm just going to add a little bit of white. So he would have used the lead white. Lead white, obviously, very, very dangerous stuff, so don't, you know, don't try looking for lead white, because you won't find it. Because it's, um, it's lead, it's dangerous stuff. So we're just going to put some more flicks of white, yellow, light yellow then I should say, in this, this field, like this. I'm going to work on that path in a minute. I'm going to just put the the yellow over this side now. Again, mixing a bit of that Naples yellow and some chrome yellow, and mixing all these yellows together. Really, they they they, they work really well together. They really do. Now, if you look at the 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 picture, I'll put it up on the screen. If you look at the picture, you'll see that he went along all in a a squiggly wiggly wiggly pattern there but when you come to paint the wheat field it was all horizontal strokes like this you got that dark color coming from behind and I would guess this would work much better with oil paints now I don't know how thick this paint is actually on this canvas now you, you can you can when you paint it with oils you can put this on like seriously thick like palette knife thickness so i don't know how thick this paint that he actually applied on you was i assume that it's very quite it was quite thick but i don't i for that i don't know i don't know
I just realised that my pronunciation of where he lived was quite bad. So I do apologise to anybody that's in France and they must be thinking, well, he can't even get a job to speak English, let alone French, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm I'm looking at what I'm doing because I don't want to I don't want to paint something that's not there <laughs> because what you tend to do is you tend to get a bit carried away for things like this sometimes and just enjoy painting away the stress of everyday life in Wales wow. with myself on with this lovely um, Van Gogh style painting. Um, so I'm just going to add a little bit more. Paint just down there. Let's colour that in a bit like that. Just enjoy, just enjoy the process I would. Um, I'm going to look at this path now because there's there's green in this path. Um, I can see green in this path, so I know we use an emerald green, but the green I'm looking at is it looks a bit yellowy in fact. So I'm going to grab a little bit more yellow to it. Maybe touch a white. Let's see what that looks like. Don't want it too bright. No, that's okay. That's a lovely color green actually. And. Put a few bits of green into this path there like that. And I'm just looking where this green goes, it comes down. And you've got like a herringbone type of pattern there. I'm seeing herringbone type of pattern there. Maybe this brush is just a little bit soft, maybe, I don't know. But okay, it's, you know, we, we get in there, we get in there. Get some red. Get some red in this path, as I said earlier. So we got some red in this path. Which is going to go on top of that Van Dyke Brown. Red is really good for pulling in the eye and it'll dechromarize the green so I need to put a bit of red in there and that I'm get some burnt umber I'm gonna get some white to that because this is what he would have done he would have used he's got a limited palette so he would have just try to change the values of these 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 paints I'm going to continue doing this now and um, I think I'm going to, there's a lot of red down this corner too, we have to put a lot of red down here. I'm just going to keep building this up. And I really want to talk about um, stress and anxiety because there's a lot of people out there that suffer really badly with anxiety and stress and, and anxiety is, 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 a, is, a, is a killer. It is not a good thing, trust me, because I've just come out of a really nasty bout of um, an anxiety. You don't actually recover from. You don't actually recover from anxiety. It just your body just adapts to the uh, the amount of uh, anxiousness that's in your body. Um, there's a hormone um, that's kicked off in the body. I can't remember what the hormone is called at the moment, but. Um, it, it never dissipates, you know. It 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 always it's always there. So I'm gonna get some Prussian blue now and and some Van Dyke brown. It's always there, so you just get used to it. Um, and the way to avoid getting stressed is to do some meditation. And um, a lot of people don't like doing that because they think it's daft and stuff. But it's not daft, is it? You've got to take some time out of your day to 
to um, relax and taking just five minutes out of your day to relax um, is, is going to be beneficial beneficial to your health I'm going to change my brush a second because I want quite a stiff brush and maybe it's the brush that I'm using that I'm not getting the effect that I want from so I'm just going to take a minute just to find a brush that I need Okay, so I dug out a brush. This is one of my brush selection brushes. Um, so I thought, let's give this a try to see how this works. And I'm going to get some white back into this yellow. It's a lovely yellow now. It's a bit better. So you need to take time out. You really do need to take time out of your day to relax and deep breathing deep deep breaths and relaxing breaths try to just relax basically It's getting there. It's getting there. There's a lot more work we've got to do to this, but I think we appreciate then that how talented this man actually was when we come to doing these type of things. I contaminated my my yellow too much, I think. So I might need to put a fresh bit of paint on in a minute, but we'll see. Just keep plopping this painting and yeah. We need to lighten this path up. What colours have we got in this path? He's got a lot of greens in that in there. He's got a nice big lump of this yellow and plop that in. What's that zinc yellow? Adding zinc yellow to the to the green we got the emerald green. Quite a nice colour that is. Get some white into it. This is what he would have done. I would imagine he would just be like, I'd just slap a bit of that in there. I like that colour. Do I like that colour? I do. Just get a few. Lines like that. It's dark on huh? But dark on top of light. I'm not getting those brush strokes that I want. I'm wondering whether you did actually wait for this to dry a little bit. I don't know. That's the fun thing, is you don't know. See, when you mix the green, look at how, how this, that's vermilion. You look at the green, you mix green with vermilion. Look at that colour. It's, like it's, like it's like a brown, dark, it's like a, it's like a dark, really dark red. What are you doing? You're just chromarising that colour. Got like a brown colour. And I can see that. I can see this colour in there as well. See that colour? I can see it in the path. It's just dawned on me that that's that's what it is. It's red and green he's mixed together there. Just to give this red tinge to this path and um there's a lot of a lot of that colour. So let's get some green and some vermilion together. 
Yeah, I mixed a bit of that up now. Let's get that down there as well. Because I can see a lot of that. Let's get some more red to it. You can see his palette can't even all colours like this and all merging and oil paint doesn't doesn't go off very quick so you can go out the second day and the third day and the fourth day and it'll, it, the paint will still be wet on his palette. And there's a bit of yellow, just get a bit of yellow on this brush Alan. Drag a bit of that through like this. Just a fun, really fun exercise. To, if you if you wanna if you wanna have a bit of fun, then this is the painting really for you. You know, it's just to help you relax and just contemplate. You know how we were feeling as well. Because when it dries, it's gonna dry really nice. I think. Oops. There we are. When it's dry, it's gonna dry really nice. I think there's there's a bit of of this color, this yellowy color. Let's merge in with this burned umber colour down there. Let's get a bit of that down in there. I'd love to know what was going on in the thought process of this painting. I don't, I, I, I am actually enjoying myself here. It's so nice to just put paint on this canvas and just see what happens with it. There's a bit of light coming down that I can see there. Like this. It's, you know, you could, you could spend hours on this. I am glad I was to spend on it, but if I was going to do this um, as a as a painting rather than just you know a, a lesson or a study, if you want, whatever you want to call this this lesson, um, study lesson lesson study, whatever you want to call this, um, a mess, Clav. Who said that? <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like what you're doing. I'm going to give you a thumbs down. Yes, it's funny the thumbs down situation, isn't it? You know, I could put a video out and within, I would say within 30 seconds of a video going out, I'll get four thumbs down. <laughs> Straight away. Four of them. So I want to thank you all out there for those those four people that put me a thumbs down. Thank you very much because guess what? It does help the channel immensely. It does because it's interaction. If you, if you really want to do something to annoy me, don't watch the video. <laughs> and... You know, if you want to interact, then you carry on interacting because I, I love it. It's a thumbs down to me is just the same as a thumbs up. I'm, I get quite excited every time I see those. So, yeah, thank you very much for that. And thank you very much for giving me thumbs up too. Because that all helps the channel grow. And so does, so does the thumbs down. And what people don't understand is that um, as far as uh, YouTube are concerned, that it makes no difference to them because a comment is a comment is interaction a thumbs down is an interaction a thumbs up is interaction so thank you very much for that all of you wonderful people out there especially those four people that keep giving me a thumbs down <laughs> i love you all i really do i got no hatred in my body at all for anybody i just i'm not got time really for that type of thought process in my brain I just want to help people paint and that's all I want to do so it is looking very 
okay, I think. Is it okay? I think it is. I'm going to get some of my um, chrome yellow. I'm going to move my medium mix out of the way because I should really put... I know, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the chrome yellow over there. And why not? There we are. I'm going to put some chrome yellow over there because I want to add some more chrome yellow to this painting. Get the lid on my paint. There we are. Don't forget these paints are available on the website www.clive5art.co.uk. These are colour mixes of Vincent's colours. Yes, and they should have the full I should have the full range there shortly. Um if I if I haven't already, so just check it out. A little bit of medium mix into this paint. And I want to get some nice thick dollops of colour. Don't be afraid to really put this on thickly you now like this. Because that's what he would have done. I would imagine he didn't mind about paint because his brother spent most of his money on paint for Van for Vincent. Vincent had a sister and a brother. So I know his brother used to help him a lot with with paints and things. Visit the Amsterdam um, Van Gogh Museum. Yes. Want to go there? Somebody wants to buy me a ticket, I'll go and do a video on it. <laughs> I wish. Some hope. <laughs> Some hope of that. Somebody sponsor me to go over to the Vincent van Gogh Museum. There we are. I'd send you a Christmas card every year. <laughs> there you go. Used to say to me, my mother, Mum, what? Why didn't I have my? Why didn't I have that for Christmas? You never asked for it. <laughs> I did. No, you didn't. You never asked for it. If you want something, ask. Don't just be casual about it. Just be ask straight out, Mum. Can I have a new bike for Christmas? No. At least you know where you stand. <laughs> And I used to say to my children, you know, if you want something, save for Christmas now. If you want something. If I say yes, you will have it. You will have it. If I say maybe, then maybe it is. And you may not have it for Christmas, but you might have it for your birthday. I would never, I would never break a promise. But if I said no, that is no. Don't keep on. You only have to ask me once. And um, and that's a philosophy I've used all through my life. And I think it's good to let people know where they stand. That's my that's that's my philosophy with it. How are we looking? It's not looking too bad, I don't think. It it could it could do with a bit more of an improvement in this area. I think we need to get some. Let's get some burned down down there. And mix in with this chromium yellow. It's a, a Van Dyke Brown. I keep calling it Burnt Umber, but it's not. It's Van Dyke Brown because, personally, in my own palette, I use a lot of ver Burnt Umber. So, it's getting to that time of day when I've got to go and take my Molly Moves for a walk. And she's a wonderful little dog. She doesn't ask for a lot. Like most animals, they don't ask for a lot. I was seen a, I was I was working, as you know, I got a day job. And, um, I was working in a small village, not too far from where, to wet now, I need green clive, not too far from where I live, and I seen the, the, the cruelest thing ever. There was this man, I'm talking too much, and I've, and I've gone in a bit green there. We'll correct that in a second, because I'm just going to let this sit again in a minute. There we go. See how I'm building these colours up? I'm just plucking on the colour, which is what you've got to do. And um, let's get some of this cochineal. Cochineal? Cochineal. It's like a very nice little, it's like a pinky colour, isn't it? It is. 
I'll have to adjust the formula, I think, because I made that up myself. Um, that's actually a colour mix, so maybe it's a little bit pink. So maybe, maybe I need to just adjust that colour, just a touch, before I put it out on the website for you to buy. www.cly5r.co.uk. So I seen this chap, and he was walking across a dog, and he had, uh, walking across a dog. He was walking across a dog with his road. <laughs> he was walking across the road with his dog. <laughs> And uh, well, he had three dogs actually, and they were little Jack Russell. Jack, and I love Jack Russells because Molly's a Jack Russell. I'm going to leave that dry. I'm going to put some more colour over that in a second. And he kicked one, and he grabbed one by the scruff of the neck, and he picked it up, and he was shaking it like this because it hadn't come across the road fast enough. And I tell you, I am not a violent man in any way, shape, or form, but I felt like as if I really wanted to jump out of the car, out of the van, and and give you a shake because. Treating an animal like that is, is there's no excuse for that, absolutely no excuse. And many, 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 many moons ago, when I was young in a, and in my twenties, I used to um, be a volunteer for the um, RSPCA, which is the Royal Society for Protection of Cruelty to Animals. And when I see things like that, it just really does get to me. And I, there's no excuse for it whatsoever. Okay, so Clive's mumped and moaned a couple of times now, and um, I think it's just got a little bit of that Prussian, that um, Prussian blue and and um, Van Dyke brown. I knew you said burnt amber again, but it's not burnt amber, Clive. It's Van Dyke brown. What I'm going to do now? I'm going to I'm going to let that dry a little bit more, and um, am I happy with the sky? Maybe maybe we can put a little bit more in the sky. I want a little bit a bit more work into that that wheat field at the moment. I'm not quite happy with the way um, the back, oh, what colour is that up there? It looks like that yellowy, greeny type of effect there. There's definitely a lot of green in this path. There's red in there as well. There you go. Okay, so enough's enough. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna let that sit for another ten minutes, and um, because I think that's the best way of doing it. I wanted to get sticky, so I'll pull the paint off my brush. So in this instance, I want the, I want the stickiness in, in the acrylic to work to my advantage. So I'll sort of see you in a tick. I'm back. Now, as I was looking at my iPad, I realised that um, there is a little bit of that um green and red mix this color there you go it's like a brown color it's it's got to be the only color it's got to be that color so what he's done and i didn't see this i overlooked that there's a few little lines like this That's really strange. Can you hear the crows? We've got crows in the field. There's crows outside. I live close to a to a wooded area, and the crows are crowing. <laughs> That's strange. Especially when I'm painting a field of field of crows. Mm. What's Van Gogh trying to say to me? Clive, don't bother doing any more. It's my painting, you're making a mess of it. <laughs> yes, maybe that's what he's saying. I don't know. Bit of compliment there. Bit of compliment. That's what this is. Look at that. Okay, so I'm looking at my reference. Watching them in there like that. It's a bit there. No, it's getting it's getting a bit tacky. See how much tackier that is. It's actually pulling the paint off the brush now. 
just put in a bit more of that down there. Let's get a bit of this yellow in there. Let's get a bit of that colour in there. I like that colour. There you go. That's a seagull if you can hear it. I don't know if you can because I got my mic set quite well in here for noise. The only thing you can hear is my seat moving and cricking, cricking. Really, I've got to fix this seat, you know. I don't think I'm going to get it much better than that, you know. I think I'm, I, I could play with this for hours, I think. I did say to you I'd show you the, the other frame that I was going to be working on. And, um, it's got a little bit light in there. It doesn't matter. I don't know if I can reach over. Let me just see if I can go over the other side of the studio and see if I can reach this, this canvas. <laughs> it's quite a big canvas, in fact. It's um, I can't remember. It is the exact. It, it is the exact size. I I had this um, canvas made, and this is the exact size he used. Uh, for this particular painting, there we go. <laughs> it's quite a big one. There we go. There we are. Look, it's quite a big one. Look at that. The size of that. That is this. That is original size. And if I can get that over. Look, it's quite a, quite a big one. It is. And there's your drawing I've actually done on there. Ready. That's been sitting there, in the studio, for the best part of eighteen months. And I haven't really got down to it. I've done the drawing. I never actually got down to to um, doing that one. If you'd like to see it, if you'd like to see me paint that one, I'll have to video it and 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 cut it and do all these other things that I normally do here and there. And, but it, you know, it'll, it'll be a good, it'll be a good, it'll be a good lesson that would. But it's going to take me a while because I want to do that one properly. So maybe if if you want to see me do that, just let me know in the comments below, and I'll see what I can do. I'd love to do it, and I'm looking for an excuse to do it anyway. And if you want to see it, then I'll I'll see what I can do. There's a bit of red in there like that. Do you know I'm not going to bother much more with this. I don't think I'm going to have to put the crows in. Um, gonna have to put the crows in because it's, it's it's not the painting without the crows, is it? Let's just get a bit of light, a bit of white in there, and then. Just put a little bit of flecky through there like that. Where's my yellow? A bit of, bit of medium mix. Check out the website www.clay5art.co.uk A lot of you have and a lot of you have bought some stuff and I want to thank you very much for purchasing all my mediums and my brink pushes and all the other stuff I got in there. I've got lessons in there for to sell as well if you want to pop along. I think there's a pet portrait one in there. I'm going to put a couple more in there. Maybe you want to maybe you want to purchase one of them. I'll see what I can do. If there's anything you want me to, to do specifically and you would you, you would like to buy something. If, if there's a video that you want me to do and you know you, you want to buy that then I can I can I can do, certainly do that for you. Um, I've got no problem with that at all. So Put your order in and let me know. Clive, I'd like to see you paint a what's name? A, a seascape, blah blah blah. And then I will I will do that for you. I will. Right, I'm gonna for a small fee. <laughs> I'm gonna um where's my brush? There it is. I know I put it down somewhere. I wanna I wanna go back into this blue now. Just to put some more brush strokes into this sky. There you go. I think what we'll do now, I think, because this is a lesson that's been going on a while, and it's just an idea. Give it a try. See what see what you can do. I'm sure you can do a lot better than I can. Um, because you've got more time than me in the studio. I'm going to pick up a short flat. I'm going to get some 
Prussian blue. Some Van Dyke brown. And let's have a look at these. Let's have a look at these. Um, let's have a look at these crows. That's how he did it. That's how he did it. Look, he had a little brush and he's just tapped the the brush in like this. See? It's a bigger bird. It's a big M. See how I did that? I'll show you again now in a minute. So it's two upside down V's. And you want to do a little V's, you can just do a little tiny V's like that. Looks like crows flying around in the field. There's one there. And he's got a little bit of a thing to it. There's another one then. There like that. There's a big one there. It looks like there's a crow there too. Must must probably landed. There's another crow then. And and, and what I like about this impression type of painting is that you can't really make a mistake, can you? Because this is so loose, you know. It's so loose. Like that. There's another one there. I'll do. Don't have to be perfect. Majority of people don't know what this painting looks like anyway, so there you are. So if it's not perfect it doesn't matter. I want to thank you very much for joining me in the studio today and painting away the stress of everyday life. And um, I, I wanted to try this and see see what you come up with. And as I said, take a little bit of time. Um, feel feel your way around the painting. I, I have a little bit of thought about Vincent and what he was going through. And if, you, if you're dealing with stress and anxiety and, and that, um, have a, a little bit of a reflection in with this painting as well. And, um, you know, search your soul and see if... Doing this type of painting is going to help you um, relax, which you should do. Um, but don't do what Vincent did and go into a field and shoot yourself in the chest because that's just not that's not good. <laughs> it's not. Just enjoy and paint away the stress of everyday life here in Wales with myself, Clive. And um, before I go, and I want to say thank you very much for joining me in the studio. And um, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And um, I'm just going to block in that little bit by there because it's annoying me. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It doesn't really matter to me. And um, I'll see you next time on a lesson in the studio. So you're welcome to come through the door at any time on a Monday. I'll see you at 7.30 Greenwich Mean Time. And there are some lives as well. So keep an eye out for them and the odd vlog around as well. So until next time, have a bit of fun. And I'll see you then. Bye.